Hello, this is George, and I wanted to introduce the latest book, and in fact, the last book in the Easy, in the Easy Language series, the Advanced Topics Edition. Um, in front of you, you will see the cover of the book. I wanted to take uh, a few moments, uh, brief moments, and kind of give you an idea of what this book covers. Uh, it's different than the Foundation and High Res Edition. Uh, those were more um, teaching beginning concepts, uh, utilizing daily bars, and then the high-res edition using uh, five-minute bars or less. Uh, this book uh, goes beyond those two, and it takes the information uh, that you've learned in both those books, and it uh, applies it to some more uh, complicated, or not complicated, more complex ideas. So uh, this is just a real quick uh, video on the introduction of this book. Like I said, it's the last book. I just finished it in the series. Um, let's see if I've got something here. Um, this book, and uh, I, I'm just gonna read off to you what is on, and you can see this on the Amazon page, uh, what this book uh, discusses. And I wanna make sure that people understand this book is a journey. Um, it's not necessarily the end result, even though the end results are pretty cool. Um, it's how you get to those results uh, and the programming uh, constructs, uh, the different functions that you have to use to get to that end. Uh, I also introduced the concept of the project file. Uh, when you uh, put together similar code uh, into uh, one project, it's easy to access that information very quickly by just opening the project. Instead of you having to hunt around and find you know, three or four functions, an indicator, uh, and a strategy, uh, they can all be uh, included in one single entity, the project. Uh, in this book, uh, let me go real quick, we discuss arrays, single and multiple dimensions. Uh, I don't go past 2D array, which a 2D array is just a table, like a spreadsheet. Uh, I tell you how to use an array as a buffer, uh, where it's a fixed array um, length, and you can, uh, I give you the, all the um, different um, calculations to calculate uh, the length of the uh, data that goes into the buffer and how to keep the buffer the same length whenever you load the data into it. I do this via the modulus function. Uh, there's a lot of um, capabilities um, that you can take advantage of uh, by using the modulus function in TradeStation and any, any programming language. Um, we discuss functions at great length, the creation of a function and how you can communicate to a function either by passing variables by value or by reference. Uh, I, I, one of my favorite pattern recognition tools is the finite state machine. Uh, we, of course, include that in this book, go into quite a bit of detail about it. String manipulation is so important because you can do so many things um, by representing um, ideas or not ideas but symbols by strings and then how you can uh, construct and deconstruct those strings to get the information out that you need. Uh, I introduced the concept of a hash table and a hash table don't get uh, you know crazy about it. It is a, it is a data structure uh, that uses a uh, function to find the address in a 2D array. Um, or a table so you can extract information from it. It's a cool way to store a lot of information in an easy, easily accessible format. Uh, I talk about token generation. A token is would be an address for the hash table. Uh, and how do you create the token via function? Uh, we go quite a bit in detail uh, in seasonality. Uh, I've never done a lot of research in seasonality, uh, but Murray actually introduced the concepts to me um, years ago. And he and um, uh, Mike Barna developed a, um, a forward-looking rate of change seasonality. Uh, so we program that. And I also do uh, another uh, huge brain, Sheldon Knight, who has passed away. And so has Murray, of course, uh, as you probably know. Uh, I talk about his uh, idea on seasonality and how to program it. Um, we do file manipulation. We create files. Uh, we construct output strings uh, using a carriage return or a line feed. 
so it makes uh, it makes it very readable to a user. Uh, again, here I introduced the concept of the project, how you can organize analysis techniques, uh, how to use the project in the Easy Language Editor. We go into detail about the text graphic object. I don't discuss any other objects in this book. I mean, graphic objects. Um, you could do trend line objects. Uh, there's all kinds of different types of objects. But I wanted to give um, a little bit of an idea of how to work with the graphics interface of Easy Language. And this is kind of the tip of the iceberg. Uh, I say in the introduction of the book, this book could have been thousands of pages long because the concepts uh, that are out there um, you know, are, are only limited by one's creativity, uh, and creativity can be quite large. Um, and then I <clears throat> finish off with the Commitment of Traders report. The Commitment of Traders report is a very powerful insider trading report, inside traders report, uh, that is, you know, is legally uh, offered uh, via the CFTC um, at the end of the, of the, I think it's the, the week, and it's published on Tuesday evening. Uh, and you can uh, incorporate that now in uh, Easy Language using the fund value function. So now you can pull that information directly into your uh, uh, analysis technique via the indicator or strategy. So I discuss how to go ahead and take the, the existing code, which is uh, a built-in indicator that plots the net change of the commitment of traders and how you can transform that into a strategy. And I lean on Murray again uh, and, and you will find out I have dedicated this book to Murray Ruggiero and his memory. Uh, but I take some of his ideas that was published in Futures Magazine. Uh, Murray was an, an editor of Futures Magazine for many, many years. And he really touched upon some very cool and advanced topics. And this, that gave me the idea to write this book, um, not necessarily for the topics themselves, but how do you program these topics? So we cover a lot of ground. Um, uh, a lot of easy language, but I don't get into the object-oriented easy language. Uh, I know Sam, Tennis, and Sonny are writing a great book on that, uh, so I didn't want to, you know, go and try to explain what objects are when I knew this great book was coming out. And I think a lot of times you need to work your way up to objects. Um, you need to understand the core or the basic easy language. You need to understand the uh, the, the the functions. Um, you need to understand arrays and things like that. And once you get a solid foundation in that basic programming language, even though we, we're programming advanced topics, we're still using the core basic easy language to program those topics. Uh, and Sam and uh, Sunny will, will take you well beyond that uh, if you are interested in object-oriented easy language. I'm going to show you real quick because I want to keep this about 10, 11 minutes. Here is... Uh, one of the tutorials that you'll get if you buy the book, all code, of course, is, is um, provided on the on my website, uh, www.georgepruitt.com. Let's take a look at this here. This is a really neat um, program or code. And this is where we're dealing with text objects. Can you see there's an S there? an X there, a B there, X, S, and B. Now, a lot of times, um, if you're having problems coming up with ideas to test, um, programming is only half the battle. It's probably maybe one third of the ba battle, maybe even a quarter of the battle. Um, the real battle is trying to figure out a mechanism that you can program. And a lot of times you're sitting here looking at a chart and says, well, I should have bought here, I would have bought here, or I would have sold here. And maybe you can go through there and explain why you would have bought there or sold there. And eventually you might be able to develop some rules. But before you do that, sometimes you wanna test uh, your little quick um, insertions on a chart like the buy, the S is for short, B is for buy and X is for exit. And see if there is some validity to it before you take the time to actually put some rules to the reason you would have uh, initiated these trades. So I've got this code, and you get it with the book, and I sh and I te and I show you in the tutorial how I was able to develop it. I'm going to go format strategies. Um, let's do this real quick. We got to status it back on format. Um, this code allows you to trade at the open where the where the text is located. 
trade at the close where the text lo is located, or trade at the exact location of where the text is located on the chart. And you can print all the trades to, a, to the print log. So let's turn it on. I'm trading at the location of the letters or the text. And here you go. Magically appears. There's all your trades. You sold short where the S was. You covered where the X was. You bought where the B was. Cover where the X was. You sold short where the S was. And then you bought at this final time. Now, why would you have sold there? Well, you could have said, I sold at the lowest low of the last eight bars. Or the RSI was at a certain level. I was way oversold here. So this can kind of give you a, uh, a tool to help you develop the idea of uh, a trading system that you could put into rules. But at the same time, the code that goes into programming this is, is, is rather cool. Um, and it takes you into how to, you can uh, you know, extract the, um, the letters and the, the graphic uh, text objects from uh, the chart, store that information, sort that information, and uh, then use it for a strategy. So that's tutorial 27. Let's see what we got for tutorial 28. Uh, this is my commitment of traders report. Uh, I've provided it in a weekly version that you can't see, but here's the weekly report uh, or a weekly strategy based off weekly bars. Uh, and then I go to daily bars because if you use weekly bars, you have to wait till the next week to take action on the report that's released on a Tuesday. Here on a daily bar, you can take action uh, as soon as the report is released um, in the, the overnight session. And I do that with this. And I show you how to take this COT data uh, and utilize it in a formula to generate uh, buy and, and exits and shorts and things like that. So um, it's pretty pretty cool tool as well. Uh, and of course, again, uh, the end result is a strategy. Uh, I'm not selling a strategy. Uh, I'm just showing you how to build a strategy and it's up to you to make, a, make it a winning strategy. And then I'm gonna show you one more tutorial. There's, I think there's seven total tutorials in this one. Tutorial 30 is uh, my multi time frame indicator, which really looks cool on a chart. <laughs> uh, and what I'm doing is I'm using five multi I'm using five time frames. I'm using a five, a 15, a 30, and a 60 minute and a 90 minute chart. And I'm pumping uh, an RS reading of 14 periods on each time frame into one indicator. So you can kind of see uh, right here the um, the five minute is over. Uh, sold so the light is green if it's oversold you want to buy uh, here it, it looks like a stop uh, stop light and that's the way I designed it uh, and the multi time frame indicators there's a lot of them out there uh, but they're hard to program and there's so many different ways to program them and um, you know your take on on what you're looking at or how you're programming them is different uh, and so I this is one approach and I wanted to show you how you can extract the information from each time frame and then plug it into an indicator, one indicator uh, that reflects some type of property of each time frame and it's plotted on your screen for you uh, for a quick reference. Okay. And like I said, I've got uh, these were just three of the tutorials that's in the book. All code is included, all workspaces are included. The Easy Language Project, where I described the project, is included. So, um, it, it, I think it, it, I think it would definitely complement your easy language knowledge to learn some of these concepts because like I said, I wanted to take a good cross section of knowledge, um, to program these concepts. And I really lean heavily on the ideas of the arrays and other data structures and how to pull information in from the functions that TradeStation gives you. Uh, and I also, oh, oh, another one I do is the radar screen. I've never done much work with the radar screen. Uh, I just never had many people request radar screen work. Uh, in this book, I am doing the radar screen. I think that's tutorial, I think it's 29. Let's see if that is. If not, you'll get to see another tutorial. Let's see if this is the radar screen. 
bear with me a moment while it opens. And this is the uh, radar screen uh, indicator. Uh, here I'm looking at the NASDAQ 100 and its components and I do a bunch of calculations. This is de uh, designed for a person that may want to day trade these um, NASDAQ 100. It gives you information like if the late, latest part of the day is the trend up or trend down, tells you the distance from the open percentage, uh, uh, distance from the low, distance from the high, is the close greater than the open? In this case, Tesla, the close was not greater than the open. Uh, and it gives you the last five minute pattern on a close to close basis. So um, programming radar screen is, is quite a bit more difficult than programming just a chart or an, I mean, an indicator or a strategy. Uh, there's a little bit of different paradigm there. So I include that as well. So I hope you, uh, I hope you buy the book. I hope you enjoy the book. And I do hope that I uh, explain the concepts um, sufficiently enough that you can understand it. Um, you can always email me. Um, if you have any questions, uh, and uh, you can always check my email at, at my uh, website, uh, and it might take me 24 to 40 hours to respond, but I always respond. So I just wanted to give you a, a brief introduction to my latest book, and uh, I am done with easing into easy language, the series. It was a fun um, process to go through. Uh, I actually learned some more stuff, uh, so that was cool, uh, and so... Um, in the future, I'll be dreaming up maybe some other books uh, dealing with, of course, easy language and, of course, Python as well. So check my book out at Amazon.com. Thank you.